Run a bit media, it's Christopher Ellis speaking. Yes. And I say, hey, we miss when reggae music play. <laughs> what a way the dance I change. Yes, we still go out the same way. Run a beat media, keep it locked. Christopher Ellis saying one love enough or run out. Happy New Year, everyone. My name is Brianna Smith, and to kickstart off 2024, I am joined with a talented Christopher Ellis. <laughs> How are you today? I'm doing good, you know. How are you? That's good, I'm good. New Year, new blessings, yeah? Yeah. Yes, so my first question for you is, can you tell us more about your musical journey and how your father, the late, great Alton Ellis, influenced your passion for music? Oh, boy. I mean, it's been adventurous. It's been great. It's like I'm living a, a, on a roller coaster ride. Oh, wow, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's been great. It started for me very young. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And before I even realised, really, it started for me, you know, when I was a little boy, the first artist I saw was John Holt. I'm not sure if you know him, you're a bit young. <laughs> He's a big legend. He's a great singer, a great singer. And I saw him come to my house and when he came through the door, I was scared, you know, because he has mm -hmm. like, big dreadlocks and oh, yeah. came and said, yes, look at Alton. I started crying. And But fast forward a few years, when I was a bit bigger, I saw the Thousand Volts album and I put it together. Oh, that's John Holt who came here when I was mm -hmm. younger. It made me cry. I, I, I remembered it. So it started from there and then it started to do shows with my dad. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And 11 years old, my first show, and just doing shows them all the time from there and that's where it started for me really so most artists my age they got introduced to music by like r&b artists like maybe yeah. michael jackson and all. my first thing was john holt and ken booth and those artists oh, yeah, and yeah. then I, and then i saw other artists after yeah, mm. usher raymond and michael jackson's and that but yeah that's where it started for me you know my father's peers yeah yeah did you always know you wanted to go into music i knew i wanted to sing okay but but being so young, you're not thinking about being an artist because that's yeah, yeah. that's a very formative thing. But it's I wanted to sing on stage. Mm -hmm. That's all I knew. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it wasn't really about being an artist so much. It was just the love of music and wanting to sing. Yeah. Yeah. As the youngest son of the late Alton Ellis, how has his legacy shaped your career and musical style? You kind of already answered that already, but yeah. But it, it, it shaped it as in, you know, he he he's the first artist that I ever discovered obviously he's yeah. the first artist so i would say having the genetics as well as having him beside me yeah shape my sound yeah, yeah, yeah. you know and you know now that i write my own songs i found my sound you know which has a little flavor of his sound mm -hmm. you know? but i have yeah. my own sound so yeah but i'm heavily influenced by you know what i was around and, and by him as well yeah i like that sure. yeah how would you describe a unique music style that incorporates reggae and rock steady well, I would describe it as um, I would say I would say my style does that, and it also, you know, me being a fan of artists like Usher Raymond when I was young, yeah, and 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 you know, those soul and R and B acts who used to listen to Mary J Blige, I used to listen to those these artists. So my music, I would say, has it has the flavor of an Alton Ellis or a modern mm -hmm. Alton Ellis or a modern Ken Booth or whatever it is, with the flavor of those of the sounds of a, of a, of a modern day R&B artist yeah, a little bit, okay. you know what I mean? So it's like a, it's like a fusion of, yeah, of, yeah. of that. It's a fusion of that. So I, I, I would say it's pretty, it's pretty unique maybe. Yeah, that's <laughs> you know cool I mean? as well, yeah. So good. What are some of your fondest memories of, of performing and touring with your father? Oh, oh there's so many. There's so many. But the first show stands out a lot. You know, being 11 years old and, yeah, yeah. and, and coming on stage. It was very, very... Ah, it's magical. It's on YouTube, by the way. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, so when you get a chance, yeah. go, on, go on and look at it. Link down below. Yeah. I was, I was 11 years old. It was a big show with Delroy Wilson. Some big stars on there. Delroy Wilson and Ken Booth and John Holt. And I came and sang out on that on that show. And that will always stay with me. Mm -hmm. You know, the first time on stage. And, yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and getting that first buzz yeah. from the audience. The first... Realisation. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 and the... The green light and the yes from the crowd. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. that will always stay with me, for sure. Are there any specific artists or musicians who have had a significant impact on your own musical journey? Yeah, I'd say I'd say yes. I would say I would say John Holt for first because mm -hmm. I listened to his album over and over. Oh, okay, yeah. The Thousand Volts album. I repeated that and thought this man was golden. And then and moving on, my, my, my father obviously, but Beres Hammond, yeah, as well as someone who are. Uh, Really, really mm -hmm. admire, you know. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Barrys and 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 there's, and there's and there's more, but mm -hmm. yeah, those artists there. For sure. 
Can you share any insights into your collaborations with Stephen Marley and Jack Yor on your single, End of Time? End of Time. That song changed my life, by the way. Really? Yeah, that song was the first song I did after my father passed away. That's the first mm -hmm. single that I've ever released. Oh, wow, okay. And it's, it's a very interesting story. I'll cut it down for you short. It's interesting, as in, I was in Jamaica, right? And there was a guy named Cooley, and he said to me, yo, mm -hmm. you should be with the Marleys, man. You should, mm -hmm. you should be on the Marleys. And you know what he done? He drove me to Bob Marley's museum and introduced me to Stephen oh, Marley. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, so I met Stephen Marley uh -huh. on like a Monday and Tuesday, end of time was made. It's so, it's so crazy. I met him on a Monday and mm -hmm. Baby G is a producer. Mm -hmm. He came to see Stephen with the rhythm, end of time rhythm and played it to him. I was not meant to be involved in anything. I was sitting in the corner like this, this, this. And he played the rhythm to Stephen Marley. And when he played it to him, I just started to sing. It's the things you do that upsets me. And Stephen Marley said, what? Sing that again. Yeah, come on. Studio right now. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. But I was panicking because I was thinking, wait, I've got nothing more. Yeah. I had that one <laughs> line only. You know? We drove to the studio and we done the song. Mm. You know? It was, it was like a convoy of cars. Oh, me and wow. the Marleys. And be a man. That's great. Um, and the song was finished. Christopher Ellis mm -hmm. featuring Stephen Marley. But that was the song there. Mm -hmm. And then we played the song in the studio for like an hour playing the song. And Jack Yo walks in the studio and hears a song. And he goes, no, nah, man, I have to be on this. And I'm a big Jack Yo fan. Mm -hmm. So the engineer took off my last verse and we put Jack Yo on the end. And then there you have it, Christopher Ellis featuring wow. Stephen Martin and Jack Yo, end of time. Song came out and yeah. just changed my life. Brilliant song. It's absolutely crazy. Yeah, very <laughs> nice. <laughs> what was it like working with such renowned artists and how did those experience experiences shape your growth as a musician? <laughs> it was it was, it was, it was amazing. After end of time, I signed the record deal yeah, with the Marleys, yeah. right? So I flew to Miami. Steve Marley flew me into Miami and I was in his house, living with Stephen Marley, mm -hmm. seeing the Marleys every day. And one day I was on YouTube in, in, in his house, right? <laughs> A quick story. And I was watching um, Stephen Marley on YouTube singing with Damon Marley. And I was, I was watching it like this. And Stephen Marley came and touched my shoulder and I took off the headphones. Yeah. He said, you don't got to watch it no more, you know, because we're here with you now. Oh, <laughs> and I laughed thinking, right, but it's, it was so surreal. Yeah. So it was surreal to to um, not know these guys and just see them on, on YouTube and, and telly and, and media. And then suddenly I'm living with them. Yeah, like a dream country. And, and making music with them every day. Mm -hmm. So it was great. I learned so much. Yeah. I learned so much because these guys, they don't play when it comes to songwriting you know, and songs. If the song's iffy, it's not coming out. Yeah. It has to be top notch. Mm -hmm. And I've learned that from them and that's the approach I have now when yeah. it comes to making songs. Yeah. Are there any upcoming projects or releases that you're currently working on in the, the new year? Yeah, we have a song coming out soon. We have, we don't stop working on music, by the way. Mm. It's, it's always going. Even if there's no plan to release this month or next month, yeah. it's always music. And, um, you know, like I say, being on the Marley's, I've learned that it's a way of life for them. It's not like, Okay, we're doing an album, so we need to go into studio. No, they wake up and go studio. Oh yeah, okay. Even I thought it was like I was like, wow, this is very, this is this is a lot because there's no break. There's no mm -hmm. okay, we're gonna chill now and go on a holiday. No, it's, it's, it's studio, and this is why people like Juno Garner, Stephen Marley, Juno Marley, they have such a, you know, they have such great catalogs as well mm -hmm. because of, because of these things. But um, we're always working on music, so we have song, songs coming out soon again. And I'll have an album coming out. But I'm not sure when. Okay. But we're, we're always working on music. Yeah. Yeah. Do you yeah. find it quite overwhelming sometimes? Or because you love music so much, does it make it easier? I, I would say I find it overwhelming sometimes because, I, because, because of this. I always want the song to be top notch. Yeah. And I feel like some, sometimes I put pressure on myself. Because we, I, might, I, might, I might do a song, right? Mm -hmm. And the song's really nice. But they want the next one to be nice as well. Oh, yeah, and the next okay. one, and I'm thinking, wow, we do this all the time. We've got to keep doing it. Mm. You can't just make a song that's nice and people love it. And, and you say, yes, I've made it. No. Keep going. The next yeah. one's to be, <laughs> you know what I mean? And I find that very, um, yeah, it's very, I, I take it very hard on myself, mm. you know. But can't stop going. Yeah. Keep going. Can you provide us some details about the album you'll be working on in Jamaica next week? Yeah, so it will be my debut album, mm. if I'm honest with you. I've put out a lot, lot of singles so far, or an EP out called Better Than Love. A very successful EP. Took me to Japan twice. But um, 
yeah, I'll, I'll be working on music in Jamaica, Miami also, and I have a bunch of songs already, you know. Mm. But it's just for us to sit down and say, okay, what is the album from these songs? Yeah. You know what I mean? Okay. What is the album? And th- and that's what we need to do, really, just sit down and just put it together and, yeah. and have an album. Yeah. How do you approach the songwriting process? And are there any particular themes or messages that you often explore in your music? Songwriting process is very, very interesting. Yeah. Because it's different each time. And there's no rules. You understand? Mm-hmm. There's no rules to how a song comes around. So, yeah. So, we go studio every day. But it's not every day you strike and find gold. Mm-hmm. Yeah, gold is like a, a, really, a really, really strong song. It's not every day you're going to find that. But we try every day to get as close to that as possible. But that's what's exciting about it as well. The fact that, okay, if we go studio every day, yeah? If we knew every day we're going to find a wicked song, it wouldn't be that enjoyable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Know, you yeah. Know? yeah, so it's the fact that we're going to go studio today and we don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. You know okay. what I mean? So we just keep going studio, keep writing songs. And one thing I will say to close off, to answer your question, I used to think that every song you record will be released. Mm-hmm. That's not the case, you know? And working at the Marleys, I've learned that and I appreciate that now. Because there's some songs that are okay songs that I think should be released. But they don't. But they're like, no, 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 just no. We're going to go again. We're going to go and search again. I'm like, okay. So now this is the approach I have. So I'm looking for gold only. (laughs) Every day now. (laughs) You know what I mean? What do you hope listeners take away from your music, especially considering your deep connection to your father's legacy? I hope that my music is loved, you know. I make music... I've never gone to the studio before and and said to myself, I want to make a number one. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I want to make a number one hit song. And I, I'm trying to kill myself to make a number one hit song. I want to, no, I just make music. I just make what comes, you know. And um, I feel like that honesty that I have in my music is what's kind of helping me to to have a career. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because I'm honest to myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm honest to the sound that I have. I don't fight the sound. I don't fight the fact that I'm a, I'm a singer with vocals, you know. I could try and fight it and say, you know what, no, I want some kind of DJ style thing. Or, no, I am this and, yeah, we have to make variety and we have to show some different sounds, but we have to stay in, 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 in what you do, mm-hmm. yeah, and be authentic in what you do. And, and I feel like I'm doing that and it's working for me. You know? yeah. yeah, I feel like it's working for me. And I feel like your listeners can tell your passion for your music as well. Yeah, I, 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 I feel so as well, and I feel yeah. so too. And the sound that I do, it's 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 I'm dealing with longevity, so I'm I'm trying to create something that's gonna span years. Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? Instead of being the hot thing right now, I'm trying to go up like this. Yeah. Instead of going up like that with the biggest thing, mm. and then you go down like that. So we're trying to do this and have a career of Alton Ellis yeah, or yeah. Barris Hammond. You know what I mean? Or, or you know, the John Holt, the core fan base. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those guys can go on stage right now and the shows will be around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Can you yeah. share any personal experiences or challenges you face in your career that have played a significant role in shaping your artistic journey? Um, I'll tell you, I, I tell, I'll, do, I'll tell you, I'll tell you the opposite of that. Because my father's Alton Ellis, so I've not faced many okay. hurdles. As soon as I step into the room, people are welcoming me. Ah, son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Before they've heard me sing. You know what I mean? Mm. So, yeah, I've, 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 I've cried before from the fact that he doesn't know what he even gave me. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. He gave, I go anywhere in the world and go into a room. Ah, son. Yo. Right. And people really welcome me just for what he's done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have a head start. Mm-hmm. And I've always acknowledged that. I have a head start. But I will tell you one funny story that happened to me, though. When he passed away, I went to Belgium to do a show. This is my first show since he's passed. And I was I was shocked that I was even booked for any kind of show. I was thinking, wait, no one knows me. Mm. <laughs> but, but it was like, Alton's son on the poster and I'm going to sing Alton's songs through to Belgium. And when I, went to the, when I went to the venue, the venue was big. And you could play football in the venue. Really? You, you could play soccer to, to like how it's empty. We could play oh. a football match on the... <laughs> on the on the um you know on the on the field if you like mm-hmm. it was empty it was a big venue big like Brixton Academy and there was like twenty people there and that and I said to myself I'm not going to sing I'm not, I'm not going to sing man mm-hmm. 
And then a lady came to me and said, oh, I came to see you. Oh. So whether there's one person here, mm. 100 or 1,000, you got to go out there and sing. Yeah. And I went out there and sung. And I sung to those 20 people like it was Ram. And that made me immune to any other show now mm -hmm. that might flop. Yeah, I can yeah. do a flop show now. Easy. Because of that one experience. Yeah. So that's the... Yeah, that's the thing. That's a little funny one that's happened to me, but it's built. It yeah. built me. Yeah, sure. You know, it yeah, built yeah. me. Yeah, and I'll, I'll go on any stage now and perform mm -hmm. like it's ran. Yeah. Yeah. How do you engage with your fans, and what role do they play in your career? Well, I'll tell you, social media nowadays is like yeah. a big part of the thing. You know. You know, it's social media is 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 a great thing, but it's also kind of I wanted to sing mm. and perform on stage, but you know, you will have people that will tell you, oh, you've got to post something today. Oh, yeah, I'm yeah, like, okay. I don't want to post nothing. I just want to go on stage. <laughs> you know, but um, that's the way now to engage your fans and, you know, sometimes you've got to post things and, and ask a question in the caption so that you get interaction. And I'm not really from this school, if mm -hmm. I'm honest with you. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not your age group. Yeah, you, you guys love it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm from a different school where, you know, when I started making songs, there was no social media. Yeah. There was, I was singing on vinyl mm. and I was singing to, to the wheel these things but now this is how it goes and I'm okay with it because I, I like to speak as yeah. you can tell <laughs> yeah <laughs> I like to interact so, so it's all good but social media is one of the big ways mm -hmm. yeah are there any particular fan interactions or moments that have stood out to you that stood out to me I will I, I will say this not really stood out to me but I'm, I'm still always in awe when somebody wants a picture you know what I mean? Because okay. yeah, because I I have artists who I put on a pedestal, who I think, oh my gosh, yeah. And then yeah. people do it to me. I'm thinking, me? Is that to me? No, 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 no. I'm not the guy to. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's it's the barest and the sugar miners and that. these guys. Those are the guys who I think, wow, I want to be around them. So when people come up to me and after a show or whatever, and they want a picture and they want anything like that, I'm always I'm still in awe of it. Mm. I'm still in awe of it that, you know, I'm an artist. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah, that's it really. I guess you don't really. see how much of an inspiration you are to younger people. Yeah, I don't yeah. really see what, you know, but I do appreciate every single person who comes up and says, oh, I love this song and mm. um, Flame Against the Wind was my wedding song oh, or something yeah, like that, yeah. you know? Yeah, it's really, I still appreciate every little thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Are there any social impact initiatives or causes that are close to your heart that you actively support? That's a good question. Very good question. You know, I do, there's something that I do in Trenchtown. Trenchtown's very close to my heart, right? Mm. My dad's from there. Trenchtown's where like Bob Marley started his career, mm. and, and Ken Booth and Alternus. And I'm down there a lot, and I see the need that people are in, and I'm so, I'm so amazed, and how of how fortunate I am. Mm -hmm. So I've done a lot of things down there. My own charity I'm starting next month. It's called Christopher Ellis Stick Together Foundation. Mm -hmm. And I've done a lot of things. I've done a lot of my own charity work. I've raised money yeah. from even like last month. I raised. 500 pounds to do a football competition in Trenchtown where the, where the winning team gets the money. I did it last year, by the way, mm -hmm. and it was great. And um, it's a five-a-side football competition. So I, so I go down there, I will have a, like a, a league of four teams. And this is all the boys in Trenchtown. And then the winning team will get the 500 pounds. Mm -hmm. And I've, I did that and I saw my, how much joy it brought to the place. Yeah, so I said, yeah. you know what, I'm gonna keep that every year. Mm -hmm. I've done that. I've, um, a lady's house burnt down in Trenchtown. And I went out and raised 300,000 oh, for her yeah. and she built like a house help. But I don't really speak about these things because I don't really do it for that. You know, yeah, I, I just do it from my heart and I don't do it for no blessing or nothing like that. People say, you're going to get blessed. No, I don't do it for that even. It's just that I see the need that they have. Yeah. And I see how fortunate I am as someone that is not even rich or nothing. But the smallest thing that we have here in England is major in Jamaica. Yeah. You know what I mean? So... Yeah, that's what I do. But it's coming, it's coming, stick together foundation, it's called. Yeah. Yeah. That's so lovely. Yeah, respect. Can you describe the feeling of performing at prestigious venues at the Jazz Cafe and notable festivals? And any standout memories? Jazz Cafe, it's close to my heart. It's the last venue my father performed at. Oh, okay. Yeah, so for that reason alone, it's, it's close to my heart. You know, I love that venue. I've, I've done it seven times now. I performed there. So that's my favourite place to perform, if I'm honest with you, mm. of anywhere in the world. Yeah, just that memory. Yeah, but I love I love being on stage, you know, I told you already that stage show is my thing. So any festivals that we get, I'm really, really, I'm anxious for the date to come. Yeah. You know, 
when Trish says, oh, it's in June. I'm like, okay, that's March now. I'm dying for June <laughs> to come. But um, yeah, you know, so being on stage all together is what it is for me. But yeah. like I said, Jazz Cafe, very mm-hmm. close to my heart. Yeah. What are some of your aspirations for the future, both personally and professionally? My aspirations for the future is to keep growing as an artist. And uh, like I said to you, I always say the live thing for me. So, you know, I would love to do some stuff that people probably wouldn't think can be done. You know, we we have shows in venues like venues like Indigo O2. We have reggae shows there as a as a as a collaborative mm-hmm. thing. So, for example. Let's just say Indigo or two, for example. As in in the reggae market, we usually have like Etana and then Morgan Heritage and let's see, Taurus Valley on the show together, yeah? Mm-hmm. In Brixton Academy, let's say, yeah. I would love to do a show like that on my own. In oh, yeah. in, in like a small in like Indigo or two. Mm-hmm. That's like two thousand people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it sounds very far fetched right now, but I feel like I could I could get there. Yeah. Right? A venue like Indigo Indigo or two, two thousand people. When I could fill a venue like that, mm. not with a lineup of reggae artists, but myself yeah. with probably a few open acts. That's what I want to do one day, something like that. Yeah. You know, I really, I really, I really, I really love the stage and I want to show more skills on the stage and mm-hmm. show off more of these songs on the stage. Yeah. Are there any specific milestones or achievements that you hope to ac- accomplish in your, in your music career? Well, I'll say this. Many artists speak about Grammy, right? Yeah. I've never spoken about a Grammy before because I don't wake up and think I want a Grammy. Mm. But I love to have a plaque. Okay. You know what a plaque is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love a plaque more than a Grammy. <laughs> you know what I mean? I've always, I've always been intrigued by, even when I'm on the Marley's and I see the plaque on the wall. Yeah. I say, welcome to Jamrock. One million sold. I'm like, wow, a million people bought this. Mm. You know, or 500,000 copies of that and that. And I'd love to have a plaque one day of something yeah, like yeah. that. Even though now streaming's coming in, so it's mm, changed the dynamics. But... Yeah, you know, to have a couple of plaques would be nice. Mm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How do you navigate the balance between honouring your father's legacy while also forging your own unique path in the music industry? I think that comes in my music naturally. Yeah, I don't think it's some. I don't think about it. It's not something that I that I try to do. It just happens. Mm-hmm. For example, all right. For one, I know that I'm never gonna sing anything derogatory. Okay. Right. Yeah. No matter what. Mm-hmm. So that's already honouring it. So now I just do whatever comes out of me, which is my sound, mix with my father's sound. It's just it's just, it's just natural, you know? Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm not yeah. thinking about anything. Okay. It's just God just making me regurgitate these yeah, things and it's stuff. working. <laughs> yeah. Are there any genres or styles of music you want to explore in the future? When I when I when it comes to music with me, I don't I don't want to explore any other sounds because they're popular. Okay, or yeah. it's just it's just showing it's just flexing your muscles and doing something else from what you regularly do. But it's not like, okay, I want to do Afrobeat song because mm. Afrobeat is in. Yeah. You know what I mean? Otherwise, I would, I would have had a song already on Afrobeat. You know? But yeah, when I'm in studio, I'm always thinking, okay, how can we do this? And I've got some songs in my in my catalogue so far that's like, oh, that's outside of what I do. Even Rubber Dub, for example, that, that song's very strong for me. Mm-hmm. Rubber Dub's a song that, you know, it's not a typical Christopher Ellis style, but I, I went there and it's, one of my strongest songs yeah. in, in my catalogue right now. Rubber Dub, check it out. <laughs> <laughs> How do you stay inspired and motivated as an artist, especially in moments of creative blocks or challenges? You know, say, if I'm honest with you, you know, so I don't believe in, I don't believe in writer's block, you know? Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't believe in writer's block. I believe that you're just overthinking. Mm. That's, what, that's, what, that's what that is, you know? Because anything that comes out can be a song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, anything that comes out can be a song. And 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 I feel like for me personally, what's been what's helped me is not writing songs every day. That's what's helped me. Because some some guys write every day. They're songwriters every day. No, I'm not that kind of artist. Yeah. And I feel like that's helped me because I will not write for a while and things build up in me, experiences yeah, yeah, and that. Feelings and, and, and then when it's time for studio now, I have something to say. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, that's yeah. that's, that's a good way. Yeah, I like yeah. that. Yeah. Can you share any memorable or unique moments from your time in the studio recording music? Yeah, I have. It's very intriguing to be around Juno Gong and Stephen Marley, and you know, their name has come up 
a few times now and it will always be in, in my career because mm. just like how uh, John Holt's in my yeah. in interviews, Alta Ellis is in my interviews, the Marlies are a big part of what I do and seeing them work and how they work is, is mind blowing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and, and seeing how seeing how they create music and seeing how they uh, seeing how they record music. It's 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 always intriguing. And seeing and just, just seeing how they make their songs. So that's what that's what I experience every day and, and that's what I take on board now. I take on that same approach. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If it's iffy, it doesn't make it. Yeah. You know, and so every day is a unique moment. Yeah. That's my answer. <laughs> What are some of the greatest lessons you've learned throughout your whole music career so far? I don't know, maybe subconsciously it's always a lesson. Maybe every day is a lesson. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's, there's so much things I experience that sometimes I can't even keep up with it because I'm experiencing things every single day. I'm in Jamaica one day, I'm with Sugar Miner, and then I'm with Gino Gong, and then I'm back in England. Mm. I'm at Buzzwax Studio in Brixton with Bucky Joe. I mean, so there's so, much, there's so many things, and I feel like me learning is not conscious if you know what I mean I'm just learning and subconsciously taking on the lesson and going to the next thing yeah yeah as it goes along. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know yeah for sure is there anything else you would like to share with your fans and your viewers yeah come to all my shows <laughs> <laughs> yeah but um, no I mean I think I have to share we, we speak about a lot your questions are very good and I feel like the whole interview so far has been very informative mm -hmm. but um you know, I, I, I want more ears for my music. Okay. I would like more ears and more and more fans because I feel like I feel like there's a lot of people out there who would love my music. Yeah. Who have not heard of my music. Yeah, yeah. And that's the struggle we have nowadays is 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 the is the pool. There's so much people mm. and artists nowadays that um, you know, there's only so much time to listen to music as well. So how do you win someone over and get you got to get in that. Yeah, in, in that yeah. window to, to be one of those people that they listen to I do feel like Spotify helps though yeah okay you know yeah. I understand because without Spotify there's many artists who never hear you yeah yeah true because because remember they have to buy your music before mm. so so they have to know about you first and then know oh that exists okay I'm going to HMV to buy so and so whereas now you have people saving your music on Spotify who yeah. never heard of you yeah just play it yeah yeah because Spotify has offered you and played it as they're cleaning their house, yeah, yeah, and they're yeah. going, oh, it's, it's, it's still got a dance. Mm. Who's that? It's Christopher Ennis. And they save it. And remember, we have the records, so I know who saved my music every week. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a thing called Spotify for Artists, and it tells me everything, all the data. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's cool. It's really cool. Yeah. Every artist has it. But, um, yeah, so I hope that answered the question. And do you think there's a certain, like, group of people who only listen to your music? Is that why you want to, like, broaden? Even that, the data shows that. Yeah. So it will show you, it will tell you, Christopher Ellis, you have 18% of of 0 to 18 year olds. Oh, okay. You have 35% of 18 to 35. It shows oh, yeah, you, okay. so you, so you can see, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. That's, the, that's the data. It shows you how much time they streamed it, what mm. country they're in. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. it's really detailed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Spotify is really interesting like that. So we got the streaming, streaming um, things, Apple, Spotify, all of them, Tidal. Yeah, let's keep going. Get me to 1 billion streams. By the way, 1 billion streams is 2 million quid. Really? Yeah. Get him to 1 billion streams. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> please. <laughs> yeah. So you have an exciting tour of Japan coming up in March 2024. You'll be there for some time and it looks yeah. like you have about 10 dates. Yeah, that's right. that's right. What are you most looking forward to during this tour? And how do you prepare for performing in different cities and different cultures? Oh, I'm looking forward to this so much, you know. It's my third time there, by the way. My third time there. They really have a thing in my music. They really love the the sound of that soul. Yeah. Slash uh, the vocals, you know, the, the reggae mm. vocals thing they really love. And they've gravitated to my sound very much. Mm. My dad used to go there and they, 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 they loved that style of singing. So I'm looking forward to it very much. And they have a certain appreciation you know, they, they study the music as well. So some of the songs that are not really the most popular ones, they will know because yeah. they uh -huh. study it. Yeah, the, the Japanese are very interesting people. Yeah. And and it's always love when you go there. It's such a peaceful place. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's such a peaceful place. And I look forward to it so much. And I'm glad it's 10 dates as well. Mm, yeah. You know what I mean? So each each show you can mm -hmm. you, you can um, add something and 
and, 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 and put it in the next show. Yeah. Um, just quickly off, off the point of that, as I said that, when you do a show, right, as, a, as an artist, let's just say you have one date, right, mm -hmm. and you do a show, you might do something in that show that you didn't expect to do, mm -hmm. and, it's, and it captured the audience, and you want to keep it. But if tomorrow there's no show, you can't incorporate oh, yeah, it yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. So when we go out and do a, a tour now, like 10 date tour, which I do, I've done it many times with the Marlies, you always keep something. Yeah. Okay, and you yeah. take to the next show. Mm. So I might say a joke yeah. that, that came off, just came out by accident. Mm. And you think, you know what, I'm going to do it again tomorrow. You know what I mean? Mm. And you do it again tomorrow and everyone thinks that you made it up on the spot. Yeah. No, you had it yesterday. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so that's the advantage of doing a 10 date tour yeah, as well. Yeah. So. You know, we can always grow the show. Mm -hmm. And then by the time we reach like six, seven shows, we have the show now. Yeah, yeah, you know okay. I mean? yeah, yeah. So I'm looking forward to that mm. as well. You will also be performing at the Skarma Festival in May 2024 and the Reggae Weekend in Bournemouth in July 2024. Can you share your thoughts of, on these upcoming festivals and the experience of performing at such renowned events? I'm looking forward to it because it's my first time, by the way, on these two festivals. And it's always, it's always, it's always exciting. Trust me to know, say, okay, there's some more festivals now on board, new ones as well like this. Yeah. So I look forward to that. I'm not, I'm, I'm look forward to, to, to showing some skills, you know, singing some of the new songs and just, and just making them hopefully fall in love with my sound and, and, and what I bring to this thing here. You know, I, I wish it was more. I wish it was, it's, well, it's going to be more. We're going to keep going and yeah. we're going to add some more some more festivals to the to, to what we have this year but i just want to grow and just keep getting better mm -hmm. you know win some more fans make them fall in love with the music and get to the billion streams yeah. <laughs> no i'm joking a billion streams is a joke but yes we want we want to yeah we want to grow the music of course and grow and grow the fan base and grow and grow this sound here yeah and and, and make christopher ellis be one of the names that you mention yeah, when, you, yeah, so. when you speak of yeah. Of reggae music and vocals, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I just want to say a big thank you for coming here today. Yes. I've had yes. a great time, a great experience. Yes. <laughs> and, and you have some great questions as well, you know? Yeah. I appreciate I appreciate yeah. having me and and yeah, and maybe we can do it again when we have something more to speak about again in yeah, the yeah, in, yeah. The, in, in the future. And so yeah, on so behalf of Rhonda Beat, we want to say a big thank you yes. and we wish you all the best. Thank you, man. Shake my hand. Yeah. Nice to speak yeah. to you. You too. My first bit. Christopher is over now. Remember to like, comment and subscribe to Runabee and hit the notification bell. Also, don't forget to follow ours and the artists' socials below.